to get it balanced is a chore and all you have to do is just barely touch it and it gets out of balance again and so I think the only way that we're going to keep our lives in balance is if we're taking time to examine our lives and I hope that's what you'll do with me today I hope that you will take some time to examine your life and just say to yourself is there any area where I am out of balance because if there is it's an open door for the devil first Peter chapter 5 verse 8 be well balanced for your adversary the devil roams about like a lion roaring in fierce hunger seeking someone that he may seize upon and devour be well balanced that was one of the first scriptures that God really revealed to me when I started studying the Bible some 30 odd years ago. And I'm grateful I started with the Amplified Bible because it's the only one that actually brings that Greek meaning out. And I was a person that was extremely out of balance. I was what the world sometimes will say a very black and white person and I tend to be that way sometimes. In other words, it's either all one way or it's all the other. I'm going to do it all or I'm not going to do anything. And you know, part of that is good because when I get committed to something, man, you better watch out because I am committed. And if I'm going to do it, I am going to do it right or I'm not going to do it at all. But when a person is like that, it's easy for them to get out of balance and sometimes be doing so much of something like work is good, but you can work too hard. Rest is good, but then some people get lazy. That's all they ever want to do. So everything has to be kept in balance. Excess is the devil's playground. Think about that. Excess is the devil's playground. Is there any area in your life? We want to talk about you today. We're not just talking about everybody else. Don't be thinking about all the out of balance people you, that you know that you wish were here. I'm talking to you today. Is there any area in your life where you are out of balance and being excessive? If you are, it's an open door for the enemy. You might get by with it for a period of time, but it will catch up with you sooner or later. Everything that we do is a seed we sow and seeds produce harvest. We're going to take a look at a woman in the Bible that we're all pretty familiar with that was too busy. Her name is Martha. Let's go to Luke chapter 10, beginning in verse 38. Now, while they were on their way, it occurred that Jesus entered a certain village and a woman named Martha received and welcomed him into her house. And she had a sister named Mary who seated herself at the Lord's feet and was listening to his teaching. So whatever Mary was doing when Jesus came in, she realized that something more important than what she was doing right then was taking place. She left what she was doing and she sat down at his feet because she did not want to miss a thing. I like to compliment people who take the time to come to a conference like this. Because I'm sure there's a lot of other things that you could be doing, especially this is Saturday morning. Many of you have worked all week and here you are now you're taking a good half of your one of your two free days when you've got a lot of other things to do but you saw an opportunity and you said I'm gonna leave what I normally do I don't want to miss this opportunity and see when we when we take those opportunities that God puts in front of us then it helps us with all of our life later and actually you might think I will have less time today but because you've honored God and followed the leadership of, your, of, of the Holy Spirit, the less time that you think you have will probably turn out being more because it's amazing how God can redeem the time. And it's also amazing how easy the devil can steal your time. People think they don't have time to spend regular time with God in the morning. You don't have time not to. That time you spend with God each day is just like tithing on your finances. You can't really afford not to because God says, if you obey me, I'll make the 90% be more than the 100% would have been if you give. And whatever time you give to God, I mean, He can give that back to you. He can make you smarter. He can make you have decisions quicker. He can make you more creative. He can send you help. He can give you favor. 
We've got to learn to do it God's way and not our way. So Mary saw an opportunity. And I just want to encourage you, stop letting opportunities pass you by because some of the opportunities that you're letting pass you by may not come your way again. We need to keep our eyes open and say, I'm not going to miss that opportunity that God has put in front of me. But Martha, I want you to look at what verse 40 says in the Amplified. I love this. Overly occupied and too busy. <laughs> It's not bad to be occupied, it's not bad to be busy, but she was overly occupied and she was too busy and look what happened. She was what? Distracted. There was something really important going on, but because she was too busy and overly occupied, she didn't even get it. <laughs> she didn't even realize how important it was. And you know what? I think as human beings, in the age that we live in, being in such a hurry all the time. And not only being in a hurry physically, but being in a hurry inside. You know, we, we need to slow down in our thinking. We need to slow down about some of the decisions we make. I mean, I believe in being decisive, but to be honest, maybe some things that you've done, if you would have taken just a little bit of time to really think about it. When you buy something, don't just think about how pretty it is. Think about how it's going to be when you're paying for it for three years. We need to think about those things. It's wisdom to think about those things. The Bible says don't start trying to build a building if you're not going to take the time first to find out if you've got what it takes to finish it. Too many people do things emotionally and we're in a big hurry all the time. And, you know, I'm going to tell you the absolute truth. Once you get caught up in this thing... <laughs> Once you get caught up in this system, this lifestyle that's going on out there, it is not easy to get out of it. And you are going to have to make a decision for yourself, and you're going to have to stick with it, because once we learn bad habits, it takes a while to break those bad habits and learn good habits. If I said today, how many of you feel that you're too busy? What kind of a response would I get? How many of you feel that you're too busy? Let's see your hand if you feel you're too busy. Well, that's, you know, probably at least 60, 70 percent of the people in here. And, you know, some of you could be on the other end of it. Maybe you're lazy and you need to <laughs> do a little bit more. You know, we can get like that, too, where we're just being fruitless, living purposeless and, and not doing anything. So we definitely need to to have balance but Martha was too busy and it was distracting her she came to Jesus and I always love this part she said Lord is it nothing to you that my sister has left me to do all the work alone you tell her to get up and help me do this work it never fails somebody who is a workaholic always gets angry at the people that are enjoying life If we're out of balance, we always get angry at the people that are in balance. And finding something wrong with them is the only way that we can justify our out of balance behavior. And I understand, Martha, she was just on the edge. And I'm sure she lived on the edge. And she was frustrated probably most of the time. And it didn't take much at all to upset her. And she reminds me of the way I was in the early years of my walk with God when God first began to try to work in my life. I was overly occupied and too busy. My mind was just going, 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 going all the time. And I got so mad at Dave because he actually rested and enjoyed life. And I would want him to get up and help me. Do something. When we didn't have enough money to pay our bills, I would just get so mad if he would just sit and watch TV and play with the kids. Why don't you get out here and do something? Well, he says, what do you want me to do? We're tithing, we're giving. God always meets our needs. Why don't you just forget that and come in here and enjoy yourself? Oh, no. No, Martha does not enjoy herself. 
Martha is against enjoying herself because Martha gets her worth and value out of being a workaholic. Because in our society, that's what people applaud. Wow. How do you do everything you do? Maybe we should be honest and say, I'm killing myself. <laughs> All my relationships are bad. I'm sick. I feel horrible. I'm not happy. I have no peace. And I'm killing myself. That's how I do it. But no, we want to act like because we're doing all this stuff that we're something special. Too busy and overly occupied. And the Lord replied to her, Martha, Martha. <laughs> you are anxious and troubled about many things. There is need of only one or a few things. Mary has chosen the better part. So part of what I want us to do today is try to figure out what's really important in our life. And what really, when all is said and done and it's all over and we're standing there just facing God, <laughs> giving an account of our life, <laughs> what were the things that we spent so much time doing that when all is said and done really wasn't that important after all? Now, you know, the older you get, the different you think, at least hopefully, because you're supposed to get wiser as you get older. When you're 20 or 30, you don't think too much about this kind of stuff because in your thinking, you just have a long time to go. And you meet somebody that's 60 and you think, man, you are old. <laughs> old. But you'll get there. <laughs> and what you do now has a lot to do with how you're going to feel when you get there. And what quality of life you're going to have when you get there. And what kind of relationships you're going to have when you get there. And I would really love it if I could help some people not get to the latter part of their life and have nothing left but regrets. <laughs> to me, honestly, that's one of the saddest things is to see an old person with nothing but regrets. Wishing, wishing, wishing. I wish I would have done this. I wish I would have done that. I wish I would have done this. And yet now it's too late to do any of that. And you know, if that person's been born again, they love God, they may go to heaven, but you only get one trip through here. And every day, every moment that God gives you, I want you to listen to me. Every day, every moment that God gives you is a precious, precious gift. The greatest present that God gives us is the present moment that we have. That's the greatest gift we have. Are you opening the gifts of God and getting the most out of every day? In the early years of mine and David's marriage, I shared with you that I was just such a mess and... Yeah, that's okay. We all start out that way. The thing that's really a problem is when you've been saved 40 years and you're still that way. You know, God has done a lot of, lot of work in me. But in those early days, I was, I was mad more than I was anything else. And upset and frustrated and aggravated. Just had this turmoil going on inside me all the time. I mean, I might dress it up and take it to church, but honey, inside it wasn't nice. How many of you know just because we dress it up and take it to church and ask, act nice around our Christian friends, that doesn't mean we've got the real life that Jesus died for us to have. The kingdom of God is not stuff. Don't be seeking things. Seek first the kingdom. Things will be added. Well, what is the kingdom? It's an internal thing. The kingdom of God is in you. It is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. It's knowing who you are in Christ, having a decent relationship with yourself, not being under guilt and condemnation all the time, not being ashamed of who you are, and it's peace and joy. And if you don't have that, you're missing the kingdom. I don't care how much stuff you own or what kind of a private office you have, 
or what rung of the ladder you're on climbing the ladder of success, you do not have the kingdom if you don't have righteousness, peace, and joy, and I might add good relationships. Because the Bible is a lot about relationships. It's about three relationships. Your relationship first and foremost with God. What kind of a relationship do you have with God? You can have as great of a relationship with God as you want. You just have to be willing to put the time into it. Stop looking at other people that have a great relationship with God and say, well, I just wish that I knew God the way you do. They didn't get to know God by wishing. They put in time. Time. And the next relationship that needs to be good is your relationship with yourself. And some of you need to take the time to get to know yourself. You need to get to know yourself. And you need to get truthful about yourself. Let God deal with the stuff that's not cool and learn to appreciate the things about you that are. Stop comparing yourself with everybody else and get a good relationship with yourself. Then the third relationship that we're supposed to be good at is other people. I believe the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost and having great relationships. Having great relationships. But you know what? In our society and in most of the Western culture, things and work and accomplishments seems to be more important than anything. And I don't think the world is going to stop and let me off, so I've decided to get off. I'm jumping off that treadmill. And I want to do what really matters. See, when you're 20 and 30 and maybe 40, you don't think much about this. But when you get to be my age, you start to think a little different. And it really hit me about a year ago. I have already lived more of my life than what I have left. It's kind of a funny feeling when you realize that you're on the bottom part. <laughs> and actually, even if I live to be in my 90s, I've probably only got about a third of my life left. And I figured out one day what that is. It's like 10,000 days. That's not really all that much. It's kind of scary when I think, man, even if I live to be really, really old, I've only got 10,000 days left. I'm not wasting any more of mine. I don't know about you, but I am not wasting any more of my days. All those days that I was angry, I wasted those days. All those days that I sat home feeling sorry for myself in a pity party, I wasted those days. All those days that I spent hating somebody and being bitter and resentful because they had not treated me right, I wasted those days. And all those days that I spent trying to impress people and be in with the right group of people, I wasted those days because those are not the things that are important. Having people clap for you is not the thing that's the most important. I want heaven to be proud of me. I want God to be clapping and saying, you're my girl. When we're in a hurry all the time, we miss all the important stuff. Are you missing the most precious things in life? The things that give long-term satisfaction and a quality life tend to be ignored. When people are in a hurry, they're not sensitive at all to what's going on around them. It's amazing how many people's feelings we hurt just because we're in a hurry. Just running all over people because we're in a hurry and everybody's supposed to cater to us because we're in a hurry. You got some new clerk working at a store and she's already maybe a little insecure and she's just learning how to work the register and the customer before you has been giving her a hard time and now it's your turn. You're in a hurry. I'm in a hurry. <sighs> oh, for crying out. Is there a manager here that I can talk to? And this poor girl's about to have a nervous breakdown. When you could just slow down and realize that you're not nearly as important as you might think you are right at that moment. And that there is something more important going on, and that is, is that you have an opportunity to make somebody else that's having a rough day feel really good about themselves by saying, you know what, don't worry about it, take your time. There's nothing I'm doing that's so important that you have to get stressed out about it.
But to be honest with you, when we're in that kind of a hurry, we don't even think. We don't think about anybody else. We don't think about how we're making people feel. We don't think about how we sound. We don't think about the impact of our actions. And whatever you're doing, when you're doing it in a hurry, you are not even really aware that you're doing it. That's why we get to the end of days and say, what happened to this day? What did I accomplish today? I remember in those early days, I, my mind was just such a mess and it was just like things would just go through my brain like, you know, just and I was trying to get all my worth and value out of what I did, so I wanted to do it all. And I'd get up in the morning and start to make the bed and the phone would ring and I'd go to answer the phone and then while I was there, I'd notice that the dishes needed to be done, so I'd open the dishwasher and start to load the dishwasher and then while I was doing that, I'd think I need to lay some meat out for dinner, so I'd run downstairs and now the bed's half made and the dishwasher's hanging open, <laughs> half loaded, and I'd run downstairs to get some meat out of the freezer and get it back upstairs and then I'd see the mail on the table and realize I needed to go to the post office and so then I'd go to the post office, run to the post office and, you know, by the end of the day, I'm like... <laughs> and I hated life. Because everything was just pressure, 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 stress, 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 stress. I couldn't concentrate on anything. My great wisdom for you today is slow down. <laughs> Get some margin in your life. Work a little bit less and accomplish more. Go to Exodus 20. Exodus 20. Verses, verse 8. Earnestly remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Withdrawn from common employment and dedicated to God. Six days you shall labor and do all your work. <laughs> but on the seventh day it is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. And in it you shall not do any work. You are your son, your daughter, your manservant, your maidservant, your domestic animals are the sojourner within your gates. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea and all that is in them, and he rested the seventh day. <laughs> Man, if God needs to rest. Now, don't get nervous. I'm not laying down a new law that we have to now all honor the Sabbath the same way that they did in the Old Testament. But I will tell you this. The spirit of the law is still very much something that we need to be accountable for. It's not the letter of the law, but the spirit of the law. The law is written in our hearts. And common sense tells us that you can't just go, 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 go. And ever have the kind of life that Jesus died for you to have. So I believe that every one of us needs to honor the principle of the Sabbath. And if you're not taking at least one out of seven days to get in a different mode... Honor God that day. Don't do your common, ordinary work. Spend time with family. And are you ready for this? This is going to be absolutely shocking. Do something for yourself that you really enjoy. See, you don't even know if it's spiritual to clap about that. I'm going to do this, and I'm going to do this for myself, because here's what happens. If you get into this religious thinking, well, I'm just going to sacrifice. I'm just doing it for my family. I'm, just, I'm okay. I don't need anything. Yes, you do. Don't become a martyr. A martyr is someone who does good things for people and resents it. 
They're always doing something for somebody and always talking about it and always feeling sorry for themselves and always feeling used and abused. <laughs> Guess I better preach to these people. At least I got three over there that are getting it. If you're out of balance, you're going to start to resent everything else that you do for people. You need to take care of yourself. Some of you have not done anything for yourself in so long that if I said to you, what do you enjoy and what would you like to do for yourself, you wouldn't even know. And especially sometimes young moms can get into this. I talk to my daughter all the time because she's got four kids and two of them are teenagers. And I mean, she just, it's really important to her that she raises her children right, and I think that's a great goal. But you know, I have to talk to her sometimes. You've got to take some time for yourself. You need to take some time for yourself. Go get a facial, sit and knit if that's what you like to do. Read a book. You got to do something for yourself. I said to her the other day, would you ever be willing to leave your kids for a week and take a vacation with me? She said, probably not. <laughs> but you, yeah, you would, right? <laughs> but you know what? It, it's not going to hurt your kids if you're not there every single minute of every day for them. You want to be there for your kids. Some people aren't there for their kids enough. But then you got to realize too that when they're gone, you, you still got to have a life. Amen. So what is it? It's balance, 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 balance. Balance. What do you like to do? Take some time to do that. Hey, listen, I work hard. I mean, I work hard. But let me tell you something. When I leave here today, I'm getting coffee with whipped cream in it. I'm... <laughs> it's a long way up here to Seattle. It's going to take us about four hours to get home. We've got a two-hour time change, so we're going to get home really late. But I'm eating my cake when I get home. <laughs> and tomorrow... I want to be left alone, so I suggested to Dave that he go play golf. <laughs> I can remember when I used to just get so mad when we'd come home from these conferences and Dave would go play golf. And I would sit and have a pity party all day after preaching to people all weekend. Then I'd go home and have a pity party on Sunday. Well, what about me? I've come to like myself. I like to spend time with myself. You know what I'm going to do tomorrow? Whatever I feel like doing. But now here, here's the thing. I've got a boundary on that kind of stuff. Monday morning, I'll be back to bearing good fruit. See, where you get in trouble is if every day of your life, you got the whipped cream and the coffee, the cake, the I've got to do what I want to, just I'm, I'm living the way I want to live, don't bother me, don't, you know. Then you're, got, you're actually going to hate your life because that's not the way God created you to be. But then if you're just working all the time and always sacrificing and always doing things for other people and letting other people manipulate you and control you, stop saying yes to what God is saying no to. Stop being a people pleaser and be a God pleaser. Stop getting manipulated and pushed into things that you resent. Now everybody's just taking advantage of me. Well, then you need some boundaries. You need to say you're not going to take advantage of me anymore. I'm going to be led by the Holy Spirit. I love people that let me be free. Oh my gosh, I love people that let me be free. You don't always have to explain why you don't want to do something. Sometimes if you just don't have peace about it, you don't need to be doing it. My daughter asked me what I wanted for my birthday, and we talked about two or three things. And I said, well, why don't we just maybe 
spend the day together. Maybe we go get a massage or something. So we made that plan. And for some reason, I just didn't have peace about it. Every time I'd think about it, I just didn't want to do it. So I just called her up. I said, I'm sure you'll understand because we've got this kind of relationship. I said, I don't know why, but I just don't have peace about that. I don't really want to do that. Well, I just figured maybe something else is going to come up that day. I don't know. How do I know? I don't care. I don't have to figure all that out. The point is, I didn't feel right about it, and she was totally cool with that. It's like, hey, no problem. Whatever you want to do. Why can't we just give each other a little space and stop trying to manipulate everybody all the time? We need balance. On your Sabbath, you need to rest, laugh, honor God, enjoy your family. Do something special for yourself. You know why? Because you are important. We're not going to get into some haughty, prideful state where we think we're better than everybody else and we're the only person on the earth and everybody needs to cater to us. But I want you to listen to what I'm getting ready to say. You cannot take care of anybody else if you don't take care of yourself. It's a great principle. One out of seven. The other six days, go for it. But you got to have a day. One of the reasons why people start to hate their life is because it just becomes same old, same old, same old, same old, same old, same You need to take a break from it. You need to do something different. He says, withdraw from common employment. <laughs> Don't do what you ordinarily do. I like to try to every once in a while just do something really out of the boat. Just something really off the wall and radical for me. I might not even always enjoy it, but at least it wasn't the same thing. <laughs> Amen? What happens when you're too tired? And I might add, most people today are. <laughs> Well, number one, you feel bad. Your thoughts can easily go in the wrong direction. <laughs> you begin to resent what you do for other people. It's very easy to get into self-pity. Discipline in any other area becomes extremely difficult. Even disciplining your mouth becomes difficult when you're tired. Come on now, you know I'm right. We get grouchy and cranky. We are more easily offended. And the bottom line is that we just don't enjoy our life. God commanded in Leviticus 25 that every seven years the land had to rest. They couldn't plant anything. Once every seven years, they had to let the land rest because he said, if you don't, it will stop producing. Well, I just can't afford to not do anything one day out of the week. No, we're trying to tell you that less is more. <laughs> Come on, you can do a little less to honor God. I'm talking to you about honoring a godly principle. And I know different people have a lot of different ideas about the Sabbath, and so, you know, I don't want to get 500 letters correcting me, but I'll just tell you what I feel. For me, I don't think it has to be any one certain day. It's just the principle that I need to make sure that I'm getting that in there. And there have even been times when I've had to do it in two half days. But I'm telling you what, you're looking at a woman that is going to be around the long, for the long haul because I now have margin and I rest. I work hard, but I do the rest of it too. And can I tell you something? If you've been to this whole entire conference, you'll be tired. Because even when you take in this much, it has a wearing effect on you. Sitting in these seats for that long has a wearing effect on you. And you know, you're likely to get a lot more out of this if you'll try to just take a little bit of time now and try to absorb and rest and get the full benefit out of it. I feel like a lot of times that in our society, we just don't have any depth anymore. It's almost like everybody's just skimming the surface of everything. <laughs> we zoom through life. 
Ooh, we went to the conference. It was cool. But could you tell anybody next week what I taught on? You know, not if you don't spend any time meditating on it or thinking about it. We need more sila. Pause and calmly think about that. I don't think that, there, that people have much depth anymore because everybody's in such a hurry. And you know, you don't get depth being in a hurry. One of the reasons why the Word is not working in so many people's lives is because we've got so much available to us and we're really proud of what we know, but it's not getting rooted in us. The Bible says the Word of God, when it is rooted in your heart, has the power to save your soul. It's not talking about salvation, it's talking about spiritual maturity. But the Word has to be rooted, planted in your heart. Well, I'm like a sower sowing seed. I'm just throwing this stuff out there. And I mean, I've said so much stuff that there's nobody that could remember everything I've said. That's why it's great to have these messages recorded. Because if, if, if you know, after being here, man, I, boy, I need this. Whew. Man, I needed that. But can I tell you something? You probably got about 10% of what I said. Because every time your mind left the room, whatever I said, you didn't get it. And we're not very good at concentration. I mean, you've gone out and had a meal, you've cleaned your house, you've thought about how you're going to rail on your family when you get home if they haven't done what you told them to do. Some of you are sitting here now and you've got maybe a three, four hour drive home and you've spent most of this meeting dreading the drive home, so you're missing it. We need to get some balance in our life, don't we? We need to get rooted and grounded. The Bible says be rooted and grounded in the love of God. Be rooted in the Word of God. Be rooted deep in Christ. Rooted. We need to have roots. You don't know anything if you're not doing it. We don't know what the kingdom is about if we don't have righteousness, peace, and joy, and good relationships. I don't care how many times a week you go to church. I don't care how much your Bible's underlined or how many people's spiritual stuff you have in your library. If you're not doing it. But we want to know it all. Doesn't matter if none of it's working. <laughs> I desperately needed a revelation on the love of God 30 some odd years ago. And I studied God's love for me for well over a year. About 10, 12 years ago, I realized that, that I had a serious problem. I didn't have a very good love walk. I had a big ministry, but I needed to get some priorities straightened out. Jesus said, a new commandment I give unto you, that you love one another. And I started aggressively working with the Holy Spirit on my love walk. And probably I study that for myself more than any other single thing. Because you, you're not going to walk in love if you don't keep it in front of you all the time. There's nothing in your flesh that wants to be good to other people. There's nothing in your flesh that wants to sacrifice and give your money away and give your stuff away. Nothing. So if you're going to have a love walk, you're going to have to do it on purpose. And the only way that you can do it is to keep it in front of you and 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 keep it in front of you. And you, and you, and you need to find some margin time in your life. Your margin time is when you're not doing anything else. I have margin time every morning. I start my day every day with margin. I'm addicted to my time with God. God only knows what I'd be like if I didn't have that. Because it's in your margin time that you hear from God. It's in your margin time that you get to know yourself. It's in your margin time that you can even realize what you did yesterday that maybe didn't work out so good. I had a day last week where I got up and I just was in a stinky mood. And I'd been having a, I'd been having I'd been feeling great and been in a real, just felt good. And, and I got in that margin time. I find, okay, God, what is wrong with me? Let's start asking God, what is wrong with me? Let's stop blaming everybody else. 
Well, if you do this, then I'd feel better. And if you do this, then I'd feel better. If you didn't do that, then I'd feel better. No, why don't we just get in some margin time, some quiet time and say, God, what is my problem? Come on now. And you know what? It was really interesting. I found out that what I had done the day before was I had not honored one of my boundaries that I normally have in my life. And you know what that boundary is? Not letting myself get too far off into trying to figure things out. Because I found out a long time ago that when I spend too much time trying to understand things that only God understands, I end up confused and frustrated and aggravated. And you know, I... Too long of a story for me to go all the way back to and tell you the whole thing. But I mean, I used to be addicted to reasoning. I mean, I had to have an answer for everything. And the truth of the matter is, is trust requires unanswered questions. If you're going to trust God, there's going to have to be things that you're going to say, well, I don't get this at all, God, but I trust you. And it's okay to think on things and ponder things and, and meditate on things. But, but what God has taught me, me, my boundary has been when I start feeling confused and frustrated, I've gone too far. Now I'm into something that only God knows and He's not ready to tell me yet. So I just need to back off and say, I trust you. Come on, I felt like this could be an important part of this message for you. And I'm going to tell you actually what happened. We'd had a couple of different situations where friends of ours had had some real tragic situations happen in their life. And I made it through the first one and the second one came right on the heels of it and man, I just started trying to figure it out. Well, how can this? I don't understand it. They're great people. And blah, 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 blah. And I talked to Dave about it and he was giving me all the right answers and I was getting mad at him because I didn't want those answers. Everything's going to work out good. And you know, I'm like, yeah, 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 I know that. I want some answers. <laughs> and then I realized, here I am now, the next day. And I feel in a low mood, feel a little down, a little discouraged, a little depressed. Got in my margin time. Okay, God, what's wrong? And he showed me, you spent the whole day yesterday trying to figure out something that you're never going to figure out. And then I realized that I had moved one of my own boundaries. And that was what got me in trouble. Well, God ministered to me and I learned some really cool stuff out of it. And he took me into 1 Corinthians 13. We know in part, we prophesy in part. When the perfect comes, we'll know even as we are known. In the meantime, Faith, hope, and love abide, but the greatest of these is love. And so really the message that I got was, you know, there's a lot of things you're not going to know, but I'll tell you one thing you can always do, and that is you can walk in love. And so I may never understand why these tragic things happen to my friends, but I can love them. I can be there for them. I can love them. And I can pray, and I can pray, and I can pray until we pray them through those things. We've got to get over thinking that we can understand everything. Proverbs 3 says, lean not to your own understanding and all your ways acknowledge him. He will direct your path. Be not wise in your own eyes. And then it says, it'll be health to your nerves. Some of you have a lousy life just because you won't let go of some stuff that you don't understand. We live in a big, bad, mean world. And much of the earth is under a curse. And there's a sin principle at work in the world. And God is just, but sometimes the things that happen to us are not just. And let me tell you something, we are eternal beings. And God's word is full of promises. And the Bible says the Holy Spirit that we've been given is a down payment of the good things that are to come. Well, if what we experience is just like 10%, man, I can hardly wait to get there. But here's what I felt like God told me. Anything that doesn't work out exactly the way that you think it should here that's in my word, that doesn't mean it's not going to work out. It may just work out on the other side of this time frame. We are eternal beings and we start our eternal life the moment that we're born again. But when we die, we don't just...